taking places for granted gets us in trouble. Assuming that a place you love could never hurt you isn't a smart move. But it's hard to love a place and have it not be safe for us and the people we love. I'm going to talk specifically about anti-trans legislation and anti-trans bias and the way that's playing out in different places. If that's not what you need to hear today, especially if this is affecting you or your family personally, you're welcome to tune out or walk out or get a drink of water for the next four minutes. But this congregation is a place where we try to hold hard things together, to name them out loud and share our strength instead of carrying hard things alone. Because of my deep attachment to Kentucky, because I have so many loved ones there, I pay more attention to Kentucky's politics than, say, Nebraska's. I couldn't tell you whether the anti-trans laws in Kentucky are worse than those in Nebraska, but I know that Kentucky's break my heart more both states have outlawed gender-affirming care for trans youth, among other anti-trans policies. There are trans youth in my family in Kentucky, and my heart breaks for them and their immediate families. These laws are not happening because there are no trans people in the 18 states that have passed such laws. There are trans and queer people everywhere, of course. Nor do these states suddenly have a distinct reason to enact such laws. There has been no grassroots movement to pass these laws, even among conservatives. The push behind them comes from a handful of conservative think tanks infiltrating the legislative processes lobbying Republican state legislators to introduce copycat bills. It's not democracy. It's not what people want. It's fascism, manufacturing power by creating outgroups to persecute and conquer. Of course, Florida is in its own category that is breaking everyone's heart. Florida has effectively made it illegal to be trans in the state, for trans people to even use the bathroom under penalty of invasive gender proving and up to a year in jail. The NAACP has issued a do not travel advisory for Florida, for African Americans, people of color, and LGBTQIA people with the statement, your life is not valued there. They recommend you don't even have um, layovers where you don't leave the airport because it is that dangerous. 14 states plus the District of Columbia have made anti-trans discrimination illegal offered more protections for gender-affirming health care, and in some cases, offered themselves as sanctuary states. <sighs> Massachusetts falls into this category of safer places. I'm glad that our members, friends, and neighbors have these protections, as everyone should. But having laws in place to make oppression illegal does not make everything magically okay. I've noticed since moving here that a lot of people have faith in Western Massachusetts, an assumption that bad things don't happen here 
or at least not as bad as in other places? Did it break your heart too to hear what has been happening at Amherst Regional Middle School? Earlier this month, the Amherst High School paper, the graphic, broke a story that for the last two years, middle school students have faced repeated misgendering and a hostile anti-trans environment. Counselors at the school refused to use trans students' correct pronouns or names, held anti-LGBTQ prayer on school property, and made public anti-LGBTQ Facebook posts. The counselors and administration failed to address anti-trans bullying from students. Kids have PTSD, can't go to school, are in serious, serious trouble. A parent filed a Title IX complaint on behalf of her child. After the graphics article, counselors, the counselors were placed on leave. The school superintendent took indefinite med medical leave. The educators union held a vote of no confidence in him and also called for the assistant superintendent to resign as well for her role in hiring the counselors and not acting on complaints, but she refused. The school committee appointed an acting superintendent who has placed the assistant superintendent on administrative leave pending the outcome of the Title IX investigation. This is our town. These are our kids. For some of us, this is our workplace. This is our neighbors. And this is the place that when we look at other places being unsafe, we sigh. At least it's not so bad here. Not so bad is still doing profound harm to children. And it is not OK. One of my wise colleagues, the Reverend Rachel Lonberg, says this. It's our work to love the part of the world that we can reach. Honestly, we are not going to make everything suddenly safe again in Florida or even in Kentucky. But it's our work to love the part of the world we can reach. It's our work to do whatever we can to help trans kids in our own community thrive. That work could be a lot of things, but I'm going to suggest three specific things today. One, respect pronouns and names always and correct others so they remember to use correct names and pronouns too. Two, hold the school committee accountable. Three, locate your love, which is to say, figure out why this matters specifically to you. I've said it before, I'm sure, but it's worth saying one million times. When adults respect trans kids, when they use the names and pronouns that let them know that they are seen and respected, their survival rate nearly doubles. If we want trans kids to reach adulthood, if we want trans adults to know that they are welcome in our communities, Respecting names and pronouns is essential. You may notice I said respect 
names and pronouns, not be perfect at. Respecting names and pronouns is not getting it right or being a failure, because it's actually not about you. Respecting names and pronouns means knowing everyone deserves to be called by the name and pronouns that correspond to their identity and their dignity, and then doing your best. If someone changes their name or pronouns while you know them, you might have to practice before it comes out naturally. Same if you are practicing a pronoun that is new to you. Ask the people you are with to remind you and do the same for them. Practice sharing your pronouns with others and listening for theirs. Hold the school committee accountable. When I say accountable, I don't mean punishment. I'm not coming with pitchforks or saying vote them out. Remind them that they are in relationship with all of us and doing work that will empower or harm children. The Amherst School Committee will have a lot of rebuilding to do over the summer and next year. Go to a school committee meeting, even if you never say anything. Let them know that their work matters to the whole town, not just parents, not just kids. By the way, this goes for towns that didn't just have a crisis, too and locate your love. Righteous anger can fan the flames that keep you going in this work, but it might burn you, too. It's not renewable, even if it feels like there are always new things to anger us. I don't just want to know what you're fighting. I want to know what you're fighting for. What is the love that carries you through? Is it a person? Is it a place? Is it a community? If we root our hopes for the future in love for the place, the roots have somewhere to go. A plant consumed in the flames of anger might keep you warm, and it might generate some good smoke. A plant taking root in the love of the land might grow as tall as the big oak tree or a sycamore in time. <clears throat> Root your work in the love of the place, not just the love of the trees and the river, but also the people in the place, the people there with you. Love starts with noticing, with paying attention, being willing to be surprised. Whether you're noticing the transit of salamanders or noticing someone trusting themselves enough, tr or noticing someone trusting you enough to be themselves with you, pay attention. It's hard to love a place and have it not be safe. It's hard to know that trans kids in our town were facing abuse from staff in addition to the bullying of students. It's hard to know that my Kentucky cousins are growing up in a place where legislators are taking away their legal right to be themselves. In this congregation, we share the good news that all genders are whole, holy, and good. It's up to us to put that message of love back into the place we are, starting right here in ourselves, with one another, in the town, and growing from there. 
just as love starts with noticing, it comes back to saying, whoever will hear. This matters. Take a breath with me, please. This was a big one. Wherever these words meet you today, know that you are whole and beautiful, that you belong and are valued are irreplaceable, and our hearts are open to one another. Amen.